I'd just like to make a few concluding remarks. I would not possibly try to summarize. Some of it will, like most of it will reflect what's already been said in different ways. Uh, but I think uh, when Carlos started out by saying our problem is that our knowledge is based on separation of everything. And this is a characteristic way in which mind tries to know things. We call it reductionism. This is the breaking up. We've got a whole that's too complex. So we break it up into parts and we try to look at each of the parts and deal with it as a separate reality and try to understand it in itself and lose more and more the relationship between the parts. And not satisfied with that, we drill down to the big deeper levels and find out, no, there's a lot more to this and a lot more complexity. And we go to deeper and deeper levels of parts and separation, more and more losing touch with the whole. And of course, uh, as has been said, systems thinking is an attempt to compensate for the breaking by relating together. We've broken up all the parts. Now, how do we put it back together? How do we reassemble uh, Humpty Dumpty? And maybe part of the problem of the session is when we say uh, different ways of thinking, maybe the word should have been different ways of knowing. Because I think the, the dominant reality that we're experiencing today, whether it's with COVID-19 or it's with the pandemic, uh, or it's with the climate change, or it's with the whole global economic social system, the political system is the absolute inseparable interrelationship between everything. There's only one reality. We cannot, we've, we've had an economics that ex pretended that it was separate from the environment uh, for centuries, uh, or it's been separate from the political system, but we know that this is only the mind's way of separating things so that we can look at parts. And the more and more we take those parts for reality, the more and more we lose the power that comes from integration. And so I raised the question, it's too profound. I think these are not the only ways we know or not even the only ways we think. And that great thinking not only is capable of breaking up or connecting together again, or trying to blend and bend. But there, are, there is a thinking that can see the whole and see things in relationship to each other. And that is more typical in the arts where we say a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> a thousand words of linear reductionism uh, in one image or even in one humorous statement captures a reality uh, that the other doesn't. So I think the point for us is that the future of our educational system, what could be more important than teaching us about the instrument we're using or the instruments and ways of knowing so we are more and more conscious of both the powers of each, each of them, each of these ways has powers in it and the limitations of them. And I think that's what the founding of the World Academy was all about. We had brilliant, imminent world thinkers, scientific thinkers who came up with, or were at least instrumental in the invention of nuclear weapons to quote, save the free world, not realizing that in the process, they would endanger the entire world and the environment and themselves and that to, for science to think of itself outside of the context of society and the responsibility of our knowledge for its consequences and its applications, this is one of the separations we've had, as if our knowledge is some way uh, independent from the world we live in. So we've had a lot of discussion already in the conference about multidisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity, and then the, the academy, it's a core. Uh, theme as it has been for Edgar Morin, uh, but this is only one of the separations. We've, we've, we've arbitrarily cut, cut up reality into so many pieces as if they're separate from each other. And knowing one, you can be an expert and a master. Whereas in fact, without knowing all, 
you could never arrive at a perfection without understanding the relationship of what of each to all. We're not even trying to give that. We're not even trying to give that global, holistic, or integrated perspective. My second comment is about uh, systems thinking has been a great advance for us, and we see the power of it, and we rely, rely on it so much today. But I'm, I'm not convinced that systems thinking is the same as integration. The systems thinking, we're trying to, we've got the parts, and now we're trying to connect them together and connect all the lines together. When it comes to the human body, the human body cannot be mapped adequately by drawing out all of the systems. Uh, it's, an, it's a mental abstraction. If you learn about the respiratory, digestive, circular, muscular, uh, and nervous hormonal systems, none of them exist independently of each other. It's only an abstraction that we say, uh, we've got these systems and we put them all uh, together. I think we can, this is a native human capacity. We've been denying the value to it. And again, coming back to what Rudolfo says about the arts uh, and STEAM, uh, to, to bring together that integrated perceptions of reality, which are real to us when we make decisions. Shall I take a job in this field or shall I move there or marry this person? We have to look at the entire reality uh, of which uh, things are made. The third kind of separation, and I'm simplifying, great development of science. We have tried to so much secularize ourselves and be objective. We've taken ourselves away from the humanity that makes us who we are. And our discussions in the academy over the years, looking at the social sciences, the most, uh, the most statistically measurable of the social sciences, economics. We have found time and again that by neglecting the subjective dimension of reality, you get an abstract reality that is unconnected with the world we live in. Why in 2008, in a matter of weeks, $10 trillion of wealth in the world disappeared. Nothing happened <laughs> except perceptions change. So if, if, our, if, our, if our social sciences lose touch with the subjective reality on which all our living is based, we are not Newton we're not living in a Newtonian world. We're living in a human-centered world where we're creating the rules, the laws, and as has been said, the values. And the idea of sanitizing our knowledge from values, I think the, the founders of the academy were really saying, we've got to put back values back at the center because nothing makes any sense. There's no meaning in economics if you're just measuring GDP, <laughs> if you're just measuring productivity. The only possible meaning it has to human beings is what does that impact on us? on our welfare and our well-being. And the final comment I'd like to make, and I, I think Ulaka very perceptively uh, addressed it in her opening remarks about creativity. One of the things that struck me about our way of knowing and our concept of knowledge is so much taken from the Newtonian world, which is natural. We understand why that happened and we learned a lot that way, but we've left out the single most important significant fact of human existence, even in our social sciences, I would say even in psychology, which is my own field of study, we've left out the individual. We've left out the uniqueness of the individual. The unique individual doesn't exist in pure physical world. We've got quarks, mesons, protons, neutrons, and so many other types of things, but the the uniqueness of the individual that finally leads to the ultimate conclusion and experience that one person can change the world. That doesn't fit into any econometric formulas. <laughs> Whether that person is a Steve Jobs or a Greta Thunberg or a Mahatma Gandhi or, uh, we have, or Martin Luther King or a, a positive or a negative. Uh, we need a, a way of knowing that take, 
And the most important is that, the most important thing we have to learn in our education is about ourselves, about our power as an individual to change, if not the world, our world, and craft it and not just be a type. And, but our education essentially conditions us to fit into some of the types, part of the holes, fit in somewhere and seek the security of that, moving away from our own creativity. So again, I just wanted to thank you because you've touched on so many key issues. We have to pursue these, I hope you agree. And we have to go further, as you have said, in finding out how do we bring this into education, not just at the higher level, I think that's way too late, from the lowest levels of education up because children, maybe are much more receptive to this than when we are when we've already been conditioned. So thanks again. <laughs>